Morning, everybody. How you doing? Happy Tuesday. <clears throat> We're going to put homie to work this morning. See if we can't find us a, a walleye here in the river. I might do this with my back to the wind. That seems to be a smarter, smarter situation. brisk out here this morning in the 20s I'm gonna see if I can't uh, I have yet to have a bite here in the river in front of my place um, so we shall see but with every with every passing day they should be getting closer and closer I got a feeling I'm going to stick the boat back in the water as well. Um, I had a few issues with it before I pulled it, you know, but uh, I think part of that was just because I wasn't, because as the ice came in and, and out there and I couldn't get very far, I think I had some issues with just, with just some plugs loading up and I've got to, uh, I think I just need to run it you know, blow the old tubes out, so to speak. So we'll see. Um, there's still current in the river here. They're still drawing current out of Codnoy. <coughs> Excuse me, when I was up to Oswego the other day, um, it was low, still moving, but low. I think it was uh, somewhere in the eight to 9,000 range. I tell you what, I had a couple of people ask me already about the about my rods. So these are the, these are my new JT rods, and three of the five that I've got have what they call the Tennessee handle, which is just a a straight. It's not really cork; it's synthetic cork with the with the textured grip overlay. But you want to talk about nice when the when the when it's cold out and your hand isn't on that uh, reel seat. Boy, that wind is kicking now all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, what a difference it makes on your hand, let me tell you. And this is this is without gloves. It's 25 degrees and the wind's blowing this morning. Um, and you have options. You can get whatever you, you know, there's three different, um, there's three different real seat and, uh, three different reel seat options. I chose this one and then I taped my reels on, which again, that, that's preference. I don't, I don't mean to say that any one way is better than another. I like these because I've said before, I, I jig with my whole hand in front of the, in front of the rough, the reel handle, as opposed to here or here or here, I'm up front. So this works out nice because I can I can adjust my reel depending on where I tape it, and uh, and so I have I have a lot of control with it, except when my blade follows in the current. Now, oddly enough, the other day, I don't normally fish cross current. Because typically your blade, excuse me, typically your blade will fold over on the fall because the current will take it sideways and then it goes like this. I don't, uh, I'm going to give it a shot. I just don't know how many fish are right here in my stretch of river, obviously. Um, you know, if, if I throw the boat in and go out in the lake, so I don't I don't think it's a matter of oh it's you know it's too cold or anything like that. We 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 catch these fish year round, see? It's grabbing the hook. I'll give it one more try time. I brought a swim bait out with me. I can try that too. 
One thing I'll do this time is when I bring my tip up on the jig, I'll keep it up there and let that let that blade bait pendulum down and uh, and swim its way back to the bottom. And I'm not I'm not doing much of a lift. I'm assuming in this cold water that they're somewhat lethargic. I haven't seen any signs of any bait around. Usually. I'll see them off, I'll see schools, especially emerald shiners and shad in the fall. Um, I'll see them right off my dock. I haven't seen any inkling of bait in here, which would be, the, my, in my guess, the reason why we're not, you know, doing much. But with every passing day, you get closer and closer because, you know, sometime in March, late March, uh, these walleyes will move in the river hard and you know, you can catch a limit right off my dock. And then, then a couple weeks later, you'll see the smallmouth come in um, and they get ready for spawn. And, and so it's pretty, pretty neat. Oh, there goes a loon. That's pretty cool. Let's go through and see who's here this morning. While I warm up my right hand because I didn't bring my gloves out with me. I got to get it to where I can see the screen. Gary Walters, good morning. Rumble seat. Nat, good morning. Uh, waiting my, on my eye baits to arrive. Can't wait to try them. Yeah, they're, you're going to be pleased with them. Eric Wisniewski. Eric, what a nice mess of pumpkin seeds you had yesterday. Man, I was I was drooling over that picture, that bucket full of those bright orange ones. Man, nice job. Uh, it's funny, you and I talked about going and finding them too. Um, nice job, my friend. Gonna feel like winter again on Friday. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I don't know. We'd have to. I don't know. What is? What's everybody's opinion? I mean, we would have to have a lot of cold to get this to. I shouldn't say that. I mean, I suppose it could skim over pretty quickly again. Um, I've been working uh, the other side of Bernard's Bay this week and, and part of last week, and and uh, you go down and when I where I turn off on 17 to go north at, in Bernard's Bay, it's wide open there. I'm wide open. Um, Morning, Bill. Morning, Paul. Do you have a preferred line you spool and pound? So, here in the last year, year and a half or so, I used to run Suffix 832 braid down to Seaguar, either red label or um, yellow label fluorocarbon. I've switched 100% over to it's that yellow line. It's a little difficult to see. I switched over 100% on all my stuff to Cortland Master Braid. Now I fish the yellow. They make it in four or five different colors. Um, my swim bait rods are eight pound braid with anywhere from six to 10 pound liter. Um, terrible visual. I can't, I can't seem to get, there we go, that's a little better. So I'm fishing Cortland Master Braid, eight pound on my on my swim bait rod. My jigging rods are ten pound, uh, whether and that's going to be my rods that I'm jigging blades with, or jigging wrap style baits where I'm where I'm especially with those where I'm really snapping them, and those will be on my blades. I fish a heavier leader so they so it keeps them upright and they don't it doesn't let them flop over. And I'm also using the Cortland um, Top Secret fluorocarbon, and it's fairly stiff to begin with, which is nice. So I'll go to like a like a 16 pound test, and that does seem excessive. It's not because I'm ah listen those, those walleyes are toothy, and I suppose they could they could rub the line in the days where they really inhale it. But I'm I'm fishing that heavy a liter more for the aspect that it helps my presentation then I need it for 
size or whatever of fish. But our lake is full of zebra mussels and, and, and that fluorocarbon and that stiffer fluorocarbon certainly has more abrasion resistance, which I like. Um, but 99% of the time, all of my casting applications um, are either eight or 10 pound Cortland Master Braid. Um, when I'm throwing an A-Rig, I run straight 20 pound um, Cortland fluorocarbon. Well, I shouldn't say that. I run, I run a castable fluorocarbon. I, last year I put on, oh, it was a Berkeley product. I forget what it was called. Um, and some other things I might switch up a little here or there. You know, my jerkbait rod, my bait casting jerkbait rod, that's got um, 15 pound, I believe, master braid. And then depending on what my leader is. <clears throat> um, but that's what I'm that's what I'm fishing. Ha ha ha, typically fishing. Right on man. Uh, that 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 little video of your daughter Iris was just adorable. It warmed my heart, I'll tell you. Um, you guys are the best. Thank you so much. Danny Diamond, good morning. Keith, good morning, brother. Ah, uh, same today. You're on him again. Great. M Dog. Winter's over for the most part. Eh. I don't know. You know, it's funny. It's mixed feelings. It's good and bad. I, 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 I don't mind winter, and I do enjoy ice fishing, and, and I wanted to do more of it than I did this year, and well, there's still a chance I could get out here or there and maybe get up north. And I heard Lake of, is it Lake of the Isles? I think it's still fishing good, and I'm sure there's stuff, some stuff up north um, that's still good, and I'm sure that there's guys still on this lake and in places I don't really know I mean I'm we're talking to Eric I'm assuming he's on this lake somewhere and and probably in a back bay that that doesn't I don't know I, I I'm sure people are finding places I don't I don't know those places. you know I'm not out looking so I don't know um, I didn't put my ice fishing stuff away and I in a moment's notice I can be back on the ice everything's rigged and ready to go in the garage you just got to throw it back in the truck and off I go but um, I'm itching. I'm itching to get, you know, I, I, the river's open in front of my house and, and as soon as I can make contact with one and get a little bit of confidence going, I'll be out here all the time because I, I'm, I'd rather be in my boat, you know, I'd rather be in the boat. I'd rather be fishing open water. Uh, <clears throat> Lake Ontario's wide open. Hasn't, I don't know that there's been any, been any ice on it this year. Um, I got to think that those brown trout are are getting ready to bite. Uh, I know in certain places, you know, there's there's multiple species you can catch. Haven't heard anything from up north north yet. Uh, and I don't know if there's still safe ice on the greater Chameau area or, or up into any of the St. Lawrence Bays. I haven't heard anything from eel or goose or, or up that way. But, you know, Black Lake... I don't know. I'm, like I say, I'm sure that there's places to still ice fish, and and there's places you can you can already get out and go uh, open water fishing. So I know the Finger Lakes are getting ready to, to rock and roll. I seen I've seen some guys down there fishing already, uh, with you know, with some bass, with some lake trout. So it's it's getting that time. No matter what the weather does, I think we're covered uh, as far as things we can do. George Parson, good morning. Tony Delamort. We all wanted to get out more, that's for sure. Yeah, I know. I know. Mike Urima, frosty outside, warm and toasty inside. <laughs> Mike's in the in the shop building baits and drinking coffee. Ah, uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Been using Cortland for the past two years. Was excited when I learned it was so close to home. Support local. So it's funny. So I just sent. Uh, I just sent a vendor packet to Cortland Line, my contact down there. Um, Cortland Line is near and dear to my heart as a, as a Central New Yorker. When I was a kid growing up, my grandfather used to run all the... So when Carrier Corporation was huge in this, in this city, and it employed thousands and thousands and thousands of men and women... Um, my grandpa they had a, they had what they what they called the Carrier Recreation League, and it was 
it was just that. It was it was fun stuff to do that the company, eh, whether sponsored or paid for, some of the stuff was on the was on the company campus. Um, there were trap fields. There were bowling leagues. There were fishing derbies. You know, and every year the fishing derby, uh, one of them was held at Martino's on um, on Lakeshore Road, right there on the south shore of Oneida Lake. And I remember going there, and everybody came home with something. And there would be people there from Cortland Line, and they had boxes of those little filler spools of monofilament. And they'd hand them out to everybody, you know. And and um, I have some old Cortland Line packaging that, that that goes back to the 50s and 60s when when my grandpa was involved and was and they were on the, you know, they were there. So I reached out to Cortland. Um, this morning actually and my contact down there and and I really want to get them involved and have them be a part of walleye fest is a is is some in some way shape or form I don't, I don't know um, but you know in Cortland's not as big as they used to be as far as like there's no store anymore down in Cortland there used to be one right off 81 right there um, everything now is is ordered online but but they make amazing products they're full force um, you know, my old in the old days, Gaiden, I used to use that Cortland camo monofilament, and it changed colors in throughout the spool. It was clear, it was brown, it was green, um, and I used to use that as my main line for years and years and years, casting the Salmon River uh, when you'd be drift fishing. So, yeah, Cortland line is great. Uh, there's a lot of great lines, but Cortland line is great as well, and. And I've enjoyed using them and making a relationship with that company. And it's close to home and it's local. And, and I like that as much as humanly possible. It's not possible for everything we do or that I use, but I like local. So, good morning, Tammy. Know of any good bullhead spots? God, I haven't purposely went bullhead fishing since I was in high school. And even then, we used to fish down to Toad Harbor at night and we'd put a lantern out and you'd have a couple rods with you but it was really to go down and sit and drink by the campfire and when the cops showed up you were like no no we're fishing you know you'd have rods there i don't know that we ever really did fish um so no i i i don't have any secret bullhead spots in my back pocket uh, my my grandpa was 100 percent Cortland multicolor braided yeah I, yeah, I've got a couple of the spools, the old Kerplunk spools of um, color segmented lead core from Cortland that that came in a, a rigid cardboard box. Got to be circa early 60s, and the line's still on it. Um, I, I, I don't know, it's like a collector's item. I live down near Cornell, Owasco, and Cayuga. Our, are looking ready for early trout. Oh, you know, that's interesting. That's something that, um, you know, Aaron, you gotta keep in touch with me as we get closer. Um, I haven't been down to the Finger Lakes for an opening day of trout season since, geez, the early 90s, maybe. Early, mid 90s, probably tops. I went with a buddy of mine, Tony, uh, down to Naples or Catherine's one year for opener. Um, put the Salmon River to shame. I never seen that many guys in that in that small an area. Um, it was crazy, fun to watch. We caught a few fish, but yeah, I'd be interested in in uh, in doing something like that. And we'll stay in touch. Went to the boat show this weekend. Holy sticker shock! My same boat is over. 15,000 more and nothing has changed in the boat. Uh, yeah, the only thing that's changed is COVID. It's because of COVID. Courtney and I say that about everything. Every time we look at something and the, the price has gone up, it's because of COVID. Um, and even if it's not directly because of COVID, every company out there says it's because of COVID. And I, I don't know that there's anything any of us are going to do about it, unfortunately. What's up, Merlin? Don Birdie, say hi to mom. Saw a lot of saw a lot of bullhead in the lake 
above Upper Buttermilk Falls last summer. Why do I know that name? Buttermilk Falls. That's down in the Finger Lakes, I think. I'm not sure. Ithaca, maybe? Is that one of the falls? I'm not sure. In Ithaca. Oh, you answered my question. <laughs> uh, my hand's warmed up. I'm going to make a few more casts with the swim bait here. See if I can't dredge something up. You know, now this rod here, this is the, this is the JTX 7'9 mag light uh, or mag medium light. This is going to be, for the most part, my, my dedicated swim bait rod. Now, this particular one only comes in one configuration, and this is with the carbon fiber insert in the reel seat. So you have, you have two points of contact plus front with that carbon fiber to transmit any and all vibration that comes up through that rod. Um, it's nice and thin, you know, very comfortable in the hand. Already, it's chilly because it's cold out here and that, and that carbon fiber is cold. Um, but like I say, at this temperature, I should have gloves on and not be messing around with bare hands, but I'm right outside the house, so I figured I was okay. It's funny, Mike Urema's over there in the shop putting together baits. I'm sure he's building those live series as fast as he can because I know everybody, everybody that keeps saying, you know, texting me or whatever, I'm like, just, just go see Mike. Look at these ducks coming in. Um... I don't know how many he's sold already, but I bet it's a bunch because boy, they look good. That log perch, that's the one, I, that's that crazy one I caught last year up in the river. And that's the first time I'd ever seen one of those. Um, now he's got a pattern that is log perch and it just looks awesome. I don't know if for nothing else, it's just, you know, black stripes on a gold bait, but you know, black stripes on a gold blade or a silver blade 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 has always worked so there's no reason why it wouldn't but boy those live series look good 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 huh to reintroduce walleye to Owasco I've never fished Owasco I fished a Tisco for walleyes off the causeway in the spring we used to go down there at night a buddy of mine had a camp right there on the east side and we'd go down at night and um, and cast big stick baits off the causeway there and catch some big walleye. Um, but like I say, that was a Tisco. I've never fished a Wasco. I don't have a ton of experience in the Finger Lakes. For me, it was always the it was always a Nida Lake, Lake Ontario, and the St. Lawrence River. The only time I ever fished the Finger Lakes is that when I was a kid. Was April first, opening day of trout season. My grandpa used to love to go down and fish Skinny Atlas. We'd go fish, we'd cast off the shore at this spot in Bord, uh, Bordino, and then we would go down to the to the south end and fish Grout Brook. Um, <laughs> that was pretty cool. First and only time I ever saw my grandfather crawl on his hands and knees up to the edge of the creek so he didn't spook anything. <laughs> that was interesting. Um, that was also where he taught me how to use clear plastic floats that didn't spook fish and no matter what you put underneath it whether it be a piece of bait garden hackle i even watched him dry fly fish with that same setup one day with a um, you know with a spinning rod that clear casting bubble and a dry fly you know a couple feet behind it i thought that was pretty neat i've done that before since then uh yeah my hands are cold so we're gonna wrap this up. Let's see who else is around. You guessed correctly. I know, man. It, those things look so good, Mike. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for you, and and I know you and Chancy worked on them a long time to get them right and to get the, to get, the pattern, to where it looked correct and, and fit on the bait. And you know, I won blade baits. They catch them all. I, I mean, I don't care. I don't care what you're fishing for, honestly, um, you, they do catch them. And those new ones are gonna be just out of this world. 
Tom Alexander, good morning. Anything is possible, good morning. Yeah, so Don Nelson, a friend of the channel, um, I've spoke with a couple times, is out near Skinny Atlas. And, and I know Skinny Atlas, uh, we, Courtney and I took the boat out there this summer. Had a beautiful evening, caught some smallmouth. It's just such a beautiful lake. Um, sat and watched the sunset, had a little picnic on the boat, you know. But I went down there looking for walleyes, and, and we found smallmouth instead, which is fine with me. And I didn't look around all that hard. But I know that I know that they consider them an invasive species and want you to keep and you know keep and kill any one you get, no matter what the size is. And I don't think there's any limit on them either. Uh, so I, I, I definitely plan on fishing the Finger Lakes more this year once uh, once the new boat arrives and and I'm a little more mobile with something that's easier to launch and load by myself. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. I want to get down there for those lake trout this spring, that jig bite. Ooh, I want to get down there for that big time. Um, so a lot of, a lot of great fun stuff coming up. We just got to wait out these next couple weeks. Kevin Stone, morning brother. All right, we're at almost 30 minutes. That'll be the show for this morning. Um, cold, breezy morning in February. We'll see. See what happens. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. John Karnowski, good morning, sir. Thank you so much for tuning in every day. I love you guys. And it's Tuesday. Be good to yourself today. Do something nice. Say something nice to yourself. And then see how it all comes back to you. Thanks, everybody. Keep your tip up. <laughs>